This video gives you the truth about Luka Doncic's first postseason. He's proved both his doubters and haters wrong by hitting an all-time great game winner and becoming the first player with 43 plus points, 17 plus rebounds, and 13 plus assists in a playoff game. Stick around to see the aspects of Luka's game helping him to set even more history than I just mentioned, and the NBA legend the Slovenian sensation Doncic most relates to. First, for answering last video's question, Kardik gets the shout out who says the Raptors can win the East because of their depth on both ends, plus the fact that Giannis' supporting cast is underperforming. Thanks for every single answer. The question's coming up for next video shout out. Whether it was Doc Rivers letting Reggie Jackson switch onto Luka on the final play, or some mysterious then straight up ruthless actions from Marcus Morris, I'll get to all the ways the Clippers have shown blasphemous disrespect towards Luka, but before delving further into Luka's historical NBA playoff inception, if you're unaware of how underestimated Doncic was in the 2018 draft, then you need to see this 1 minute and 20 second clip of pure garbage projections and utter disrespect from those making a living to go in front of the world on national television to give professional basketball analysis. I'll warn you, the footage is wonky and of course the takes are cringy, so try to hang in there, but here's what the quote unquote experts had to say about the Slovenian. Tell me about his Luka feet Don is slower than rush hour traffic. That's <laughs> my takeaway. I just he doesn't pop athletically. The athleticism that that's a problem. The lack of athleticism. Yeah, it doesn't have it. Doncic at six seven will get exposed for all of the inadequacies that Dirk. He struggled with quick defenders. Dirk's not a great athlete. No. Dirk does have explosive no. quickness, right? No. Dirk isn't physical. No. Well, that's what's going to happen to Doncic. We tend to over sensationalize European yeah. basketball. He's European, or he's going to be the Dirk. Skip, that's an anomaly. It sounds like you're saying Luca will not be like a perennial all-star type player. I'm exactly. not saying Luca is setting the NBA world on fire. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure he's going to be a dominating NBA player. I don't believe he's a lottery pick. Not a lottery no, pick. No, I don't. I don't. DeAndre Ayton is going to be the number one overall pick, but it's incredibly important that the Phoenix Suns don't mess this up. I don't give a damn about how this kid in Europe looks. I mean, I'm not loving what I'm hearing about Luca. Then. This kid's a really I mean, he's better than Ricky Rubio, but he doesn't, sure. look, he doesn't look special to me. It turns out elite passing and dribbling ability, combined with a sensational basketball awareness, make up for not having top-notch speed and dunking. Who knew? Mavs owner Mark Cuban certainly did. That's why Dallas traded up from the fifth to third pick back in 2018, giving up their first round pick in the following year to do that. But the real reason those national TV takes you just saw were so off the mark is because there's a reason top scouts speculated whether Luka Doncic could get selected as high as number one overall. It was because since the young age of 15, he'd been playing in the Euro League, aka the second most competitive basketball league in the entire world. From 2014-15 to 2017-18, as a teenager, Luka competed and developed in a league against grown men who weren't far off from NBA talent. Luka's third and final EuroLeague season was where he started gaining legitimate attention from front offices. He led Real Madrid to the EuroLeague Championship and was league MVP, so it's tough to see what drove those analysts I just showed you to give those brutal takes. It was easy to assume the experience leading his team to a title in the EuroLeague benefited him in the NBA and of course just in his first playoff appearance. The same disrespect Luka received entering the league from numerous analysts has been duplicated in Luka's first playoffs, but this time in the form of a trash-talking Montrez Harrell plus an overly aggressive and potentially cynical Marcus Morris. In Harrell's case, competitors say things in the heat of the moment, so I wouldn't think of painting Montrez as a racist for calling Doncic a put white boy, but in a league striving for equality at least on the surface, something I have to note is the fact that if this was the other way around and Luka said black boy, the NBA would have maybe banned Luka from the 2020 playoffs. There would have been hysteria all over Twitter. We know the activist would have to say something about that. Point is, Luka would be the league's most hated player. Harrell wasn't suspended or fined by the league, apologized to Doncic, and rightfully there were no hard feelings. Then there's Marcus Morris, who firstly denied initially stepping on Luka's ankle. You're seeing every angle of the play right now. I'll let you be the judge if Morris is guilty here. It's tough to say. However, the killer Doncic seemed to have channeled some feelings about the general disrespect given to him by the Clippers. I'm going to show you a breakdown of the incredible Game 4 revenge from Luka, but I can't gloss over the aggressive foul from Morris, a play that's completely dirty and has no place in this game whatsoever. 
The foul's been memed all over the internet. I'll admit those memes are hilarious, but you know what wouldn't be funny? The best, most marketable young player in our league and a definite top 10 player getting permanent eye damage on a play like that. In the first two games of the Clippers Mav series, Luka passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to break the NBA record for the most amount of points scored in a player's first two playoff games. And here you can see the size of Doncic, his handles on a string and poise are just overwhelming for Jackson. Time after time, Luka just exposed Reggie and really all of the Clippers' reputable defenders, which earned him some respect from Kawhi Leonard. Sum up the battle your team had against Luka in this series. Oh, I mean, he's a great player. Uh, I think his first playoffs, uh, I battled every minute he was out there on the floor, then back down, um, led his team every game, and, you know, he did a hell of a job out there. Luka's gruesome Game 3 ankle injury left him questionable for the next game and missing Porzingis, the Mavs' chances looked bleak. But Doncic strapped up for Game 4 on a hobbled ankle and continuously maneuvered through scrambling pick-and-roll defense. On this possession with Lou Williams seeming to be blocking the passing lane to the corner, 90% of creators would just see two plays to make. A. Jump stop and get it back to Boban, or B. Try and draw the foul at the rim. Instead, Lucas somehow whips this bullet of a pass through the outstretched arms of Lou Will to get Timmy Hardaway a wide open triple in the right corner. In the third quarter off a of flare screen, Luca puts Reggie on skates and then calmly steps back for a deep range bomb. Then it was utter dominance down the stretch, as I'll walk you through a few more instances of Luca magic before the rest of the records contended with and broken from Doncic in these playoffs. Up four, Luca forces Lou Williams to switch onto him. Luca puts his eyes on the rim and baits Lou Will with two simple hesitation dribbles, but instead of attacking the rim, steps back to display his ridiculous shooting range. LA still forced OT though, and down two with 54 seconds left in the frame. Luca blows past Kawhi in a scramble, uses a polished in and out dribble. Morris still contests the shot very well, but Luca hangs in the air off his healthy ankle to make this lay in look easy. The next possession, Reggie Jackson's forced to switch on to Luka, and Doncic exposes him with a few beautiful dribble combinations and then a dominant spin move to the cup. After Morris hit a dagger to put the Clippers up one, why Doc Rivers didn't tell Kawhi to stay on Luka by any means and fight through the screen is beyond me, and the rest is history. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer, bang, bang, it's good, Doncic wins the game! Rounding out the insane history he's competing with and broken in these playoffs, Doncic set a new record for the most playoff points in a debut with 42 in Game 1 versus the Clippers. The 21-year-old became the youngest player to ever hit a playoff buzzer beater and the youngest to record a 40-point playoff triple-double. Doncic and Michael Jordan are the only players to put up 40-plus points and hit a game-winning buzzer beater. Luka and LeBron James are the only 21-year-olds to record 30-point triple-doubles in the playoffs. Doncic also became the first player in NBA history to average 30-plus points, 8-plus rebounds, and 8-plus assists in his first playoff series. And lastly, Doncic's 28-footer game-winning buzzer beater is the second longest in playoff history behind only Portland Trailblazer guard Damian Lillard's 37-foot three-pointer against Oklahoma City. Even though Mark Cuban said he doesn't want Doncic compared to other NBA legends, let's ignore the Mavs owner and look at a combination of legends that Luka relates to. With the way he's going off, you could make the case that Luka's on a path to have a Michael Jordan type impact on the league, but let's focus on the aspects of his game that most compare to a couple all-time greats. After his 43-17 beasting, Mavs coach Rick Carlisle related Luka to a combination of Jason Kidd and Larry Bird, saying, quote, Both Kidd and Bird are from the same fabric competitively. Their will to win and resourcefulness. It's not just about putting the ball in the basket, it's about giving teammates confidence, unquote. While comparing Doncic to a hybrid of those two players is pretty on point, I'll give Doncic a more creative and modern comparison. I think the Slovenian relates to a mix of LeBron James and Manu Ginobili. Of course, he doesn't have the springiness of LeBron, but in terms of Luka's playmaking vision and ability to glide through pick and roll scenarios at his size, he relates pretty strongly to LBJ. The reasoning for the Manu comparison comes down to Luka's crafty finishing, just his ability to maneuver into the paint, get his footing, and then continuously drain buckets, no matter how awkward they seem. If you enjoyed my content, for more NBA predictions, stories, and rankings, hit subscribe, and for a chance at next video shoutout, let me know how good you think Luka can be and why. My name's Adam, call me D-Flow, 
Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video.